Guys, welcome back to the channel. Get some sun with Paz. Today we are in Cyprus, but we're in Varosha, the ghost town. We're going to take a little bit of a trip around it because now it's open. You can actually walk around it or you can get an electric scooter or a buggy. We're going to see what they've got available and we're going to take you with us. So stop messing about and come with me. Yes, folks, welcome back to the channel. Now, we are actually in Verosha. You've never been able to go around this part up until recently, and you can actually walk around it now. Or you can hire one of the scooters or get a buggy, somebody drive you around. I'm going to show you the prices. Have a look. There's your prices, guys. Now, it's in Turkish Lira, so you can get a two seater scooter for 500 Turkish Lira. Um, you can have a buggy tour. Three people, 450 Turkish Lira. Five people, 750. Seven people, 1,050. Uh, and you, it's, it's a bit hard to read actually, some of it's in Turkish. Four hours is a 100 Turkish Lira. Four, not too sure what that's for to be honest with you guys. But that's the board anyway, it's a little bit scarce on information. And then you come here and you get your tickets from there. And if we walk over this way, this is where all your scooters are and your buggies and your bicycles. So folks, we're here with Julie. Gary, this is our guide for the day, he's actually brought us over here. And they got Dave as well with us, all right Dave? <laughs> right, we're going to get on one of these scooters, we're going to rent one of these electric scooters that I have never had a go on in my life. So, somehow, I'm hoping I'm not going to end up on my bum, to be honest with you, but have a look. Oh, guys, so Julie's actually getting on the scooter now, she's giving it a go. You've got to, get, you've got to go in a straight line as well, Jules. Go down onto the road first, and then go, go along the flat surface. Get used to, get used to it first. You get used to it, boy, when you take me to work. <laughs> this guy's Julie's off. <laughs> I've got to admit, folks, I'm a little bit worried here. I've got my scooter, I've never drove one of these things in my life. Um, and I've got to try and hold the camera at the same time. I'm just pretending to drive it. <laughs> Bear with me. Yeah, so we're at the, the start of the ghost town now, and I nearly had a little bit of a mishap on my scooter. <laughs> I couldn't stop it, and it nearly went into a van. Oh, right, Dave's off. Let's catch up with him, folks. I'm all over the place. We're going now, we're going now. So, folks, we're going to pull over here, and I'm going to just show you some of these buildings as well. So these used to be hotels back in the 70s, before 74, when the Turkish invaded and occupied Varosha and the rest of the northern side of Cyprus. Look at these streets, eerie. If you've ever stayed over in Cyprus and you've been part of the Socus Group, you stop in one of the Socus Group hotels. This was one of their hotels up until 74. And this is the head office. Look at it now. And then you've got some cafes in the corner there. Still got the old signage up. So this hotel in front of us here is the first one as you come into the city. And it's the one where they actually bombed first and took out the entire lift shaft. So if you were in that lift shaft at the time, it was a bit of a solid state. And then we've got Smoky Joel's restaurant. We're standing still in time since 74. And the hotel above it. The garage just told me that the first hotel there is the Salaminia. Right, folks, we're going to get back on my little uh, scooter and scoot off. Well, as we walk up to the back of this hotel, if you look towards the bottom here, I think you can see my finger, you can see all the machine gun bullet holes in the ball. There's lots of fighting here. This is where all the fighting first broke out. Obviously, the Turkey invaded this part to start, to start with, firing everybody this way, which would cause all the Greek Cypriots to flee that way. And you've got a church here, 
and it's known that this church has actually got tunnels connected to that hotel. You've even got the swimming pool at the back, look at that. It's amazing, guys. It's such a sad story, but the history is absolutely amazing. They are, folks. So this is where, if you took a, a tour in the past before they opened up Verosha, that's where the beach you uh, was allowed to swim on. And that you was allowed to swim in the water, but you weren't allowed to come past it any further. And you've got a little cafe just over the back there where you can sit and have a drink. And then you've got the crumbling hotels right behind you. And you can see just how glorious the beach is. Now, just at that side of the beach, you can see where the water changes colour. It gets a lot bluer. It's actually a complete, um, I don't know what you call it, a steep incline down into the sea. Steep drop, you can actually jump off the sand into the sea, you can dive in. It's a sheer drop. And then this here is a gradual slope down into the sea. But look at the colour of the water, folks. It is absolutely gorgeous. This used to be one of the best beaches on the island of Cyprus back in the 50s and 60s. All your celebrities that used to come over here, your Hollywood stars. All your famous people used to come here. And this was the main resort, Varosha, in the uh, district of Famagusta. Absolutely a gorgeous beach. And you can imagine back in the 70s as well, before 74, all of these hotels used to look absolutely stunning. Those all modern hotels, all freshly built, all freshly refurbished. And look at them now. There are one or two dotted along the front. They've actually been done up and reopened um, by the Turkish. And you can see the parasols on the beach way down there in the distance. Um, obviously, there was no permission to give her anything. The Turkish just decided to do it themselves. Um, I've got no opinion on it whatsoever, so please don't comment down below um, if I'm saying anything wrong, because obviously I'm still learning about this. I can only tell you what our guides are telling us. And obviously, you only get to get one side of the story. So. Yes, folks, it's absolutely glorious here. And I can just just close your eyes and imagine what this was like back in the early 70s, 60s, 50s. The golden eras. So, folks, if you look right into the distance, right to the edge of the town, you can see a Lung Hotel just there. That is actually owned by the Royal British family and it's still untouched since 1974. It's still got all the furniture in there. And there were certain hotels along here that the Turkish weren't allowed to touch. Um, and that apparently it's still got all of the, still, uh, the, the furniture and everything that was still left in there. The day that the city was um, basically took over, everything's still there. Right, now folks, what I'm, gonna, I'm just going to give you a little bit of a statement here. Don't please, if you're going to put anything in the comments down below, Please don't try to make it offensive or anything. Obviously, people did lose the lives here during the war. People lost the homes, the businesses. And if I say anything, and I, I, I feel a little bit undereducated about the place, obviously, I can only tell you what the two guy tells me and what other two guys that I've been with in the past over here. Because I've been here, this is about my seventh time in Verosha. Um, obviously, if I, if I say something wrong, I'm going to admit that I don't know everything about this place. If I say something wrong, just correct me nicely in the comments down below and let me know what actually happened or your opinion on it. So just the, over the back of that restaurant there, you can see the, uh, the Cafe Escarurial, I can't even pronounce it. Just the back of it there, you've got the Golden Mariana Hotel. Let's get a bit closer. Look at this Great Britain's post box here, guys. King George. GR post office. I think he's missed the last post. Just over the back of these buildings here, you've got the Golden Mariana. It seems really strange. We're in the city, look at this. That nobody lives in. And it's stood still in time since 1974. Where's my phone? Dave's looking for his phone. Have you found your phone, Dave? It's too many. Yeah. He's got his phone. I'm glad you got your hat as well, because you lost it earlier, didn't you? <laughs> yes. Dave was coming down the road on his scooter and his hat blew off. I went back to fetch it, and as I bent down, I pressed the power button on my scooter, and my scooter fled off without me. I had to run after it and grab it before it went into this beach buggy. Dinner really? <laughs> Come on, stop messing about. Stop messing about. <laughs> That's it, Dave, you're learning. Come on. 
And so guys, we've got the Eagle Voice restaurant. And it was a bar as well. And just in there, you can't see it through the windows. And unfortunately, I'm not allowed to go any closer to it because there's ropes in the way. And they will come out and have me if I try to. But in the middle there, there's an old jukebox that's been stood there since 1974. A lot of these places have actually been looted, but there are still one or two items sitting around. There's actually supposed to be some car showrooms as well with some old uh, cars from 1974. Never been drove. Yes, yeah, so if you just look through this window here, the one with the X on it, I'll try and zoom in in post. You can see the old jukebox that's still sitting there, all the records have been took out of it. I'll try and get that zoomed in in post if I remember. Oh, so folks, I've had to take my hat off. I know I shouldn't do it because it's 46 degrees today, absolutely baking. But the sweat just keeps building up in my hat and running down my face. And of course, where I'm going on this scooter, I'm mean, absolutely ringing wet. Um, if you're going to do this, pick September to come and do it in. Um, I'm going to give you a quick view around there. Now, I'm, going to, I'm not going to go into the history and everything of this place. Um, there's plenty of that already on YouTube and already on the internet and that. I'll just come out around. We're just going to drive around and give you a view of it. And then if you decide to come to Cyprus, this is well worth the excursion. Come and have a look. That there, folks, is the Famagusta Tavern. It's supposed to have been really, really lively back in the 60s and the... The 50s. Such a shame. Uh, they're all shooting off without me. I better catch up with them. Now these these pavements here was actually laid down in 1974, just before everything happened. And if you look down there, look, people were writing in the concrete because it was still wet. Down there, you've actually got Pat and Bob, first of the fifth, 1973. Hopefully, you can see that on camera. Pat, GB, Nina, 1973. All these names was all wrote in the concrete in 1973 as the pavement was uh, laid. 30th of the 5th, 73. Panionis and Rosie, May, 73. And they go on forever, all the way down there. There's just names all in the concrete from 1973. Down here, folks, we've got Dan Brunding, the uh, 21st of the 6th, 1973. Michael Magnuson, which is, I think it's the 11th of the 6th, 1973. Was this you? Was you on holiday in Varosha in 1973? And did you write this? into the concrete slabs. Um, 1973. Some of it I can't actually, it's very, very bright. Uh, Magnus, Ronald and Elizabeth. 21st to the 5th, 73. Wolf, I think it's Wolf Jackson. 73. It's crazy, it goes on all the way up there. So if you look at this building there, you can see all the fighter jet bullet holes. It was actually fighting the resistance that was in the building. You can see all the bullet holes all rippled up through the bit throughout the building. And if you look just over here as well, you've got another building all rippled with bullet holes, cannon fire, and you've got this building here that's totally destroyed, totally collapsed. I can't pan you any more around to the right because we do have the Turkish army base and I'm not allowed to film. But if I pan you around the other way, you can see over here we've got other hotels as well, all deserted. All these roads over here as well recently, they've all been uncovered because they was all over ground with plantation, um, weeds and everything that have grown over the last 45 years. And they've stripped it all back, created a road again so that we can come around and view the city. And just over here as well, you've got another one. I'm not going to pan you any more round to the left because we have got the Turkish army base. But you've got another hotel just over there as well. And then just here, you've got the Riviera Hotel. Now, do you remember coming out to Cyprus before 74 and spending a holiday in this hotel? Right, so folks, Gary's just told us that this is the only car left in Verosha. Every other car was taken away, uh, and everybody's in their own opinion to what, what model it is, what, what manufacturer it is. Do you have any idea what that car could be? 
Let's try and... I can't get any other handle, uh, angle from it because I've got the ropes in front of me. I'm not allowed to go any further. But this is the only car that's from, been left there since 1974. And it's the only car still in Verosha. Leave down in the comments if you actually know what make and model that car is because it's been stripped of parts and it's totally smashed in the front, which is why they didn't take it away. Uh, they literally couldn't move it. What make and model is that car? Yes, we do actually have the Turkish army barracks down there, so I'm not allowed to film it, so I won't get any closer, but that I'll tell there. He's been used by the Turkish army as a barracks. And there's lots of little hotels dotted around Verosha that's used as a barracks by the Turkish army. Let's get back on my scooter and carry on. Well, right, folks, we just stopped off just so we've, we found this little bar called Michael's Bar. Does anybody actually drink here at Michael's Bar? Uh, See if I can find out what that actually says on the wall there, 1967, that's been there since 1967, that writing on the wall. So, on the left hand side we have Jamal, uh, Carry Island, we don't know if that's a village or something, where they came from. It was there, it's in 1967, you wrote his name on the wall, and then you've got Safak Mehmet. Uh, that's the village he came from underneath, Antep, and that was on the 1st of 1967. It's absolutely amazing, it's like stepping back in time. And it's not really faded on the wall, it really stands out, really bold as well. So that's Michael's Bar. Did you have a drink in here? Back in the day, back before 74, did you come on holiday and did you use Michael's Bar? Let me know in the comments. Also, it might be that it might be the actual soldiers here that have put their date of births on the wall there as well. So it might not be from 1967, but if you think otherwise, let me know, let me know down in the comments. Lovely little bar though, what well, it was. <laughs> there are folks are in front of us now. We've got the Asterius Hotel. Did you ever stop here on your holidays before 74? You've got some absolutely beautiful trees as well. Look at these trees. They are stunning. Wouldn't you love one of them in your back garden? Beautiful. Uh, now it's a, st a sad story. Obviously we're just having a look around. We don't mean to be offensive or anything like that. I, did, I know I did laugh about Michael's bar. Oh, hopefully this wagon's gonna miss me. There he is. Um, we're just we're just tourists, just working our way around the, the city of Verosha, having a look. I'm just hoping um, if some of you was here, it brings back memories, and you can see what it's like now. It might bring back memories of when you holidayed here. There we are, folks. We're standing in front of the, is it the Argolis Hotel Flats, uh, the log apartments back in the day. And Gary just says, this is one of his favourite buildings and he's named it When Nature Takes Over. Have a look at this. Yeah, you see all the vines growing up the building. Eventually, if that was just left to stand, it would be completely covered in these vines. And that's the Argalis Hotel Flats. I think it says Argalis, can't quite see up there. It's partially covered. And then just beyond, folks, we have what I think is called the Seren Sima Hotel. I'm probably not pronouncing these right. And we'll try. Still barely standing, you see all the cracks in the concrete as we pan up towards the top of the building. Another beachfront hotel, literally the beach is just there. And there's a little shop there as well, you can go down there, you can sit on the beach. If this was open today as a resort, it would be such a beautiful resort as well with all these flowers. It looks absolutely stunning. It's just such a shame. Yeah. Have a look at this folks, we're going to have this amazing walk down to the beach. I'm trying to avoid the potholes in the pavement, it's as bad as Britain, isn't it? <laughs> Absolutely stunning. You've got a small beach bar there to sell some snacks and some drinks. And then have a look at this for a stunning, stunning view. Pure white golden sand, it's like paradise. You've even got 
working foot shows as well on the beach. And if you look back that way, that's where we've come from. You see the Blue Hotel in the distance. We've come on from all the way over there. Now, the city of Varousha is actually six miles by six miles, 10 kilometers by 10 kilometers. It's a massive city. If you just walk around the entire route, it'll probably take you about two hours. You do it around about 40 minutes on a scooter. So, usually when people do videos, they usually pan around this way and give you a sea view. However, in this case, because we're in Varosha, the ghost town, I'm going to pan this way and give you a view of history. Look at that. I know you got all that. It meets such a beautiful paradise like dream like beach and look at the colour of the water folks I could run down there now and just dive in there but I've not got my swimming shorts so let's carry on we're just going to go in this little shop now get some refreshments and we'll carry on right then folks you know how this works we've sat down for a, a nice little refreshing drink and in this case it is Tuborg it's like being back in the turkey vlogs isn't it from back in there uh, about 8 weeks ago we're going to get this out down this one. We're not going to nick it though because we've got a little bit of an empty belly. It don't look very empty, I know. I'm not going to make the same mistake as what I did in Turkey. It's got a pull off cap, and this time I've actually took it off before I tried to drink it. Julie's just telling Gary now about the time when I tried to film myself swigging out the bottle without even taking the cap off. Anyway, pull off cabs. Caps. Of the future. And we could see what he was going to do. We Bottoms up. We're on tube bug, by the way. Bottoms up. <laughs> Cheers, Yamos. Oh, yeah. Yamos. Yeah. Uh, Yamos, <laughs> Gary. What's the Turkish? Um, <laughs> yeah. Oh, um, Gary, down now. <laughs> it's been a long time since I've cheers over it's, here. We're so just going to say cheers. Is. It's been a long time since I've cheers over here. Um, I'll tell you what, folks. Have a look at my cap. Look at this. It is ringing wet. Look at it. I could ring it out on top of Julie, couldn't I? Oh, no. Give her a shower. Right. There's music playing, so I'll drink this and we'll carry on with a little tour. Stop messing about. Remember, really. Right, folks, we have actually managed to find out what Yamas would be in Turkish, and it is Sherafay. So, guys, Sherafay. So we're going to carry on with the two you now. We've just been having a bit of a laugh with uh, Gary, our tour guide. We've been telling him about all the antics that Johnny Boy, that's with us. He's not come on the tour, he's still in the hotel swimming pool. Tell him all the antics about what he did. So I'm going to tell you guys. Right, the first night that we got out here, we went out to the Ghetto Bar. And Johnny Boy, our, our mate Johnny, you'll do one of, one of the videos. You'll recognise him when you see him. Um, he decides that he's going to go back to his hotel room. Absolutely blot out. Gets up in the middle of the night. Didn't turn the lights on. Got his eyes half shut, walks in through the toilet door, he's a click behind him, he opened his eyes, found himself in the corridor, with absolutely nothing on. He was totally stalker, so he's there banging the door trying to get Lisa to wake up and open the door and let him back in. And other people coming out the hotel room to look at him, he was having to stand there, covering his bits, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. He ended up having to go find the toilet because he needed a way to start with get a, a towel out of the cleaners room and run down to the reception they're also peeing themselves laughing i tell you what he's such a laugh guys we're going to carry on with the two now i'm going to get back on this scooter try not to kill myself and show you the rest of the come on there yeah, guys this is the scooter that i'm driving i tell you what they're absolutely fantastic why these are not legal in britain i do not know there's such a good way of getting about you just stick your hands on here you press go there and you shoot off into the distance. You're sounding a bit like your bottom door. Right, folks, we're going to actually end this video. Um, Julie's had a bit of an accident on the scooter. She basically, she'd come off, she bashed all the mouth in, and knees bleeding. She's got a massive, massive swelling on her arm as well. Um, we're going to end the vlog now. We're going to go back to the southern side. We're going to skip the Famagusta to her, and we're going to get her to the general hospital. So, um, Are you okay? Hopefully, she's going to be okay. Just um, hit the subscribe button and hit the likes. And I'll, sorry, I can carry on with the vlogs, but we... 
priority is getting Julie to the hospital. I'll see you later. Thanks for watching.